Hi guys, it's Alex here for Chess Factor, and in today's video we're going to be talking about the Sicilian defense. The Sicilian defense starts after the moves pawn to e4 and black plays the move pawn to c5. This is one of the uh, most popular responses and in fact it is the best scoring response by the black player against 1e4. So it's definitely a move to know a little bit, bit about it from both the white side and the black side. In this video we're going to be talking about some of the major uh, Sicilians because the Sicilian isn't just one opening, it's more like a group of openings. So we're going to be introducing the names like Sicilian Nidorf, Sicilian Dragon, the classical variation of the Sicilian and a few more. So let's uh, dive right into it. The first thing I want to say about the Sicilian is to try and explain what the logic is behind such a move. Well, most beginners, when they start playing chess, they're advised to meet the move pawn to e4, controlling a bunch of the center, with the response pawn to e5. Uh, this makes a lot of sense, just mirroring uh, white's, white's move. However, another principled way of fighting for the center turns out to be with exactly this move, the Sicilian defense, where black does not play in mirror fashion, but controls one of the most important central squares and also opens up the diagonal for his queen, which is very relevant in some of the Sicilian uh, variations. One of the reasons why the Sicilian makes a lot of sense as a choice is because black grabs his share of the center in asymmetrical fashion and is therefore able to play ambitiously. He tries to play on the queen side. White might have a little bit more uh, control of the center on the king side, but this gives uh, chances for both sides and creates double-edged play. If on the other hand, white decides he wants to punish this move, you know, black is being very ambitious with c5 instead of mirroring his opponent and recognizing that white stands a little bit better. If white wants to punish this move, he usually has to follow up with a move like knight to f3 and after a variety of black responses, whether it's e6, d6, or indeed knight to c6, after all of these moves, white will usually follow up by trying to grab hold of the center with the move pawn to d4. The uh, benefit for white is that after the exchange of pawns, white plays knight takes d4, and white has a very nice uh, central position here quite aggressively posted. On the other hand, the drawback is that white has had to give up his d-pawn, which is on one of the two central files, the e and d files, in exchange for black's flank pawn, the c-pawn. Since in chess, the central pawns tend to be worth more than the flank pawns, this is already quite a big achievement for black. It means that white, because he's more aggressively posted, will have uh, some very good attacking prospects in the early stages of the game. But if black is able to resist the attack, then his better situation in, the, in terms of central pawns may actually give him a much better position in the middle game or in the late middle game or even in some end games. So therefore the Sicilian uh, is a very logical response against 1e4 and it's an extremely ambitious response. White certainly doesn't stand worse after this move. He stands perhaps a little bit better as he does across the board. But if you want a top drawer opening against e4, then certainly c5 is the way to go. Okay, so that's been the introduction, and now let's dive into the different uh, Sicilians that exist. So, after the move e4 and c5, the easiest way to digest the different Sicilians that exist is to take first the move knight to f3, which will point to an open Sicilian. In this video, we'll only really be touching upon the open Sicilians. There are other options like knight to c3 for a closed Sicilian or c3 for the Alapin or the c3 Sicilian. And you can also play different types of closed Sicilian, fianchettoing uh, the bishop and playing a little bit slowly as white. While all of these systems may be um, perfectly reasonable for white to play, 
The most principled way of handling the Sicilian is by playing knight to f3 and preparing for that d4 push as already mentioned. So, therefore, after e4, c5, knight f3, it's time for black to make the next move. And here is the big split. There are three major options for black. Black can either push his king's pawn to e6. This makes sense as it takes control of key central squares like d5 and activates the bishop. He can also push his queen's pawn, pawn to d6. This will activate the other bishop, free the square d7 perhaps for the knight, and also protect the pawn on c5 as well as take control over the e5 point. Finally, the other option that black has, the other major option, is to move knight to c6. Again, a very logical choice, controlling the e5 squares and the d4 squares. Let's take a look first at what happens in the case that black plays second move, pawn to d6. White will follow up with pawn to d4. Pawn takes pawn. Knight takes pawn. And here black develops his king's knight to f6. And already we can see that it's quite useful that black has, has his pawn on d6 because the e5 square is under control. White cannot push this pawn forward and harass the knight. White typically responds with the knight move to c3, defending his pawn. And once again here we have a split. So black has uh, four major choices here. He can play the move pawn to g6. He can play the move knight to c6. He can play the move pawn to e6. And he can play the move pawn to a6. Let's take a very quick uh, look at each one of these. So the first one that we can look at is the move pawn to g6. This move is the so-called dragon variation of the Sicilian defense. So black's intention is to fianchetto the bishop and then to quickly castle on the king's side. Well, the biggest risk of playing in this way, in fact, uh, there is a video up in this Sicilian series where there is a game uh, against the Sicilian dragon and that will give you a better, more in-depth look at what happens when black plays like this. The biggest danger that black faces is that white will make quick developing moves like bishop e3, f3, queen d2. I will not show the specific move order but just the general plans and white will then try to launch these pawns forward using this easy target here on g6 for a very quick and dangerous attack. This is the Yugoslav setup against the Sicilian dragon and it's really, really a very challenging setup for black to meet. For his part, black will generally try to um, play along the queen side, organizing his pieces in different uh, ways with many different subtleties. But in essence, there's opposite side uh, castling in the position and so both sides will uh, try to attack. The dragon also sometimes features exchange sacrifices on c3. This is a regular uh, theme. Very, very dangerous uh, opening, but playable right up to the highest level levels. It's been favored by the current uh, best player in the world, who is Magnus Carlsen, the world champion. So this is the dragon. Let's take a look at the other options. The next move that we're going to look at is the move knight to c6. It's again a very natural move, simply developing the queen's knight and challenging white's central knight. This move is the so-called classical variation of the Sicilian. And the most popular reply here for white is the move bishop to g5, which in part is aimed against dragon setups. By placing the bishop on g5, black is not able to fianchetto his bishop because the move g6 would be met by bishop takes f6, and now e takes f6. And the structure for black is very badly damaged. He certainly does not want to allow this possibility. Therefore, against the move bishop to g5, black must play pawn to e6. And um, after this, we are in a position, this is called with bishop g5 and e6, it's called the Richter uh, Rouser variation of the classical Sicilian. And this is one of the most heavily disputed positions in the classical uh, Sicilian. Very often what will happen is that 
uh, white will at a given moment actually capture, let's imagine a position where uh, there is opposite side castling, and white will very often capture on f6 either with, because the bishop, the queen has left or simply the queen is still on d8, but for reasons we won't get into right now, black recaptures with the g-pawn and white often ends up with a kind of position where he pushes the f-pawn and we have a very difficult um, debate as to who stands better here because on the one hand, white gives up his dark squared bishop and uh, leaves, uh, leaves black with the bishop pair, but on the other hand, black's pawn structure is damaged and sometimes it can be very difficult for the black king to find a safe home. There are some typical maneuvers in the Richter Rouser, such as the black queen driving to this uh, relative safe square here on e5, or black advancing his h-pawn and placing his bishop on h6, but it's really a battle of black having a very strong center and the bishop pair, which can be very dangerous, versus white having more space in the center and a better, uh, healthier pawn structure. So some very complex play in the classical Sicilian, certainly not one for beginners. I would recommend uh, a Sic uh, many other Sicilians, even the Dragon or the Nidorf, which we will look at very soon ahead of this particular Sicilian. So let's take a look at the next Sicilian. The next variation that we're going to take a look at is the so-called Scheveningen or Skeveningen variation. And this involves the move pawn to e6. Black doesn't want to push the pawn to e5 to gain space. In fact, this would be a very bad idea immediately because the move bishop b5 check is a very, very irritating move for black. Black cannot block with the bishop without allowing a knight to jump to f5 when it cannot be captured because of uh, the pin on the bishop, and at the same time, if black blocks with the knight, then the bishop is not controlling that f5 square. Therefore, if black wishes to play the space gaining move pawn to e5, generally speaking, he has to prepare it with the pawn move a6. And in fact, this move is uh, a move that we will look at uh, next. So we will understand this move more in the context of understanding the so-called Scheveningen variation of the Sicilian. Here, black plays without grabbing so much space as you would with e5 and without pushing back the white centralized knight. But the benefit of this move is that unlike this move, it a does not have to be prepared and b it does not create a weakness, a long-term weakness, a potential outpost here on d5 when, because this pawn has been pushed and there is no c-pawn, this square here cannot be controlled for the rest of the game by a black pawn. One of the drawbacks uh, of playing this move pawn to e6 is that you cut off the scope of this bishop here on the h3 to c8 diagonal. As a result, white has a free hand to play for the initiative on the king side with this rather strange looking move pawn to g4, but in fact, this move is one of the most feared options against uh, the Scheveningen Sicilian, because uh, this move creates a very quick threat of grabbing a lot of space on the king side and striking at this knight and pushing it back, cramping the black position. Notice how white is playing at this point on five ranks, whereas black is only playing on three. Also, you might be wondering, what's the justification for such an advance as this? Isn't this going to leave the kingside very weak when the white king castles kingside? However, in the majority of Sicilians, or at least in very, very many Sicilians, white actually prefers to uh, free up the, piece, the pieces from the queen side and castle queenside. Therefore, these pawn advances on the kingside don't really bother uh, white, and in fact, since black usually castles on the king side, notice that black is missing a c pawn, so the queen side for black is much weaker than the queen side for white. Because of this, these early pawn advances make a lot of sense since uh, white's attack manages to uh, gain speed 
um, from a very, very early point in the game. So that's the Scheveningen and the Keras attack within the Scheveningen. Let's now look at the Nidorf before we are finished with all of the um, Sicilians arising from move to d6. So let's take a look at it now. The final uh, move that we're going to look at is actually the most popular of the Sicilians, and that is the move pawn to a6 here. This move was favored by such greats as Bobby Fischer and Gary Kasparov, and in more recent times, uh, some of the top players in the world, like Hikaru Nakamura or the French number one, Maxime Bachier Le Grave, uh, very much enjoy playing the Sicilian Nidorf. The idea of this behind this move was already brought up when uh, I spoke just a few minutes ago about this possibility of playing e5 immediately and the drawback being that white can give this very nasty check. Therefore, black plays in the Sicilian Nidorf, plays a6, taking control of the b5 square, and only on the next move does he prepare to play the space gaining move e5, attacking the knight. Also, we had mentioned the Keras attack involves the move pawn to g4, and in this instance, here, if white, for example, plays f3 against a6, then after the move, e6 now, we switch, we sort of suggest we're going to play a Nidorf, but instead we switch to a Scheveningen, having avoided that immediate g4 move by delaying covering the influence of this bishop by one move. This uh, particular uh, way of playing with a6 first and then e6 was essayed on many occasions by uh, Gary Kasparov, the former world champion and longtime number one. So, uh, this is certainly something to keep in mind. Now, most of the time here, in fact, there's a great choice for white, and there is one of the games that we covered where we go into a little bit more depth about the many different options that white has here. He can play h3, he can play g3, he can play f3, he can play bishop to e3, he can play bishop to c4. There are many, many different moves available to white. One of the most common ways of playing is featured in our... Uh, it's as a master game in our coverage strictly on the Nidorf, and that involves a setup where white plays his pawn to f3, his bishop to e3, his queen to d2. Typically black responds with e5, knight uh, moves away to b3, and black sets up his pieces something like what I am showing here, where once again, true to the Sicilian defense, we have opposite side castling, and we have the possibility of attacking with a fast g4 and h4 for white, and a fast b5 and typically b4 for black. This uh, way of playing is known as, this particular setup for white is known as the English attack, because it was popularized by some of the uh, top grandmasters in England in the 1980s. Um, and that's about it as far as this, this quick introduction on all of the different possibilities after the second move, pawn to d6. Now, in the next part, I'm going to show you uh, some coverage of, instead of second move, pawn to d6, what happens after the second move, knight to c6. So, let's check that out now.